In this video, we're going to create a GPT called Crypto Advisor that talks to Coinbase's APIs to retrieve information regarding a particular uh, cryptocurrency about the price details. So for example, as you can see on the right side here, uh, we'll make a call to api.exchange.coinbase.com to provide the latest details regarding Ethereum and the Crypto Advisor will reach out and request that information from that API and provide us with the following information like current price, bid, ask, volume, last trade size, and time of the last trade. We're gonna use uh, GPT's actions section here to create a schema. Uh, so I'll walk through the step-by-step -step guide on the different sections of the schema and how to add parameters to ask different information. With that being said, let's get started. All right, so I'm already in my create GPT section here. Um, I'm going to start on the create tab really quickly. I'm going to say create a GPT called Crypto Advisor that will collect the Coinbase Exchange APIs to retrieve information about cryptocurrencies, create a profile picture as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get started in this section. And then once um, this is created, we will switch to the configure tab to take care of the rest. All right, now that that's done, let's switch to the configure tab. And then we will we'll also create our own custom instructions. Uh, so for now, I'll probably just get rid of this um, and then turn on the code interpreter. And then let's jump into the action section. All right. So the action section of the GPT, this is where you can utilize and connect to external APIs to retrieve information. So we will work in the schema section here. Um, so an API schema is just like a blueprint for a building, but for a computer program. So it's detailed plan that tells how an API um, should work. So this plan kind of includes the instructions, um, the rules, the expectations on how the API should respond. Um, so that's all basically put together in the schema. And then the API schema will retrieve the information from that uh, API that it's communicating with. So here on the example sections, um, we have several examples. So these are the different formats for API schema. Uh, JSON, obviously JavaScript object notation. This is the most common one. Uh, so when you click on the weather example here, this will just give you an example of what this schema will look like. Again, we'll get, you know, we're not going to use this obviously, because this is just an example. We'll use our own um, based on uh, Coinbase exchanges uh, documentation. But essentially, it will have um, endpoints where we'll send the request. In our case, it will be Coinbase. It will have a method on how to ask information. So in this uh, situation, we'll use get. Um, and then also have request parameters, meaning what information to provide when you're um, sending that request to ask information. And then also the response format, what you will get back uh, from that API that you're talking to. And then also, also provide error messages as well if something goes wrong. So let's go ahead actually and go to Coinbase's documentation. So I'm in docs.cloud.coinbase.com. So when you come here, uh, again, there's um, um, different sections. You can start in the welcome section. So this is where you'll see uh, the documentation for the APIs. Again, you don't have to use this. This is just an example. You can use any APIs. It will have the same format, uh, very similar documentation that will tell you um, how to use the different parameters, how to make a request, how to retrieve information, and what kind of response it will send. Uh, so for example, here, uh, REST APIs are obviously the most popular one. Uh, but for Coinbase itself, there's several types of APIs. There's two categories. So there's the trading API, and then the market data API, right? So depending on what you're looking for, um, you can go through and read the documentation. Again, for any uh, other APIs that you want to use, you don't have to use Coinbase's API. This is just an example but it will all kind of look similar. So what I'm going to do is come back here um, and get rid of this and go through it step by step and create our own API schema. Okay, so step one, uh, we're going to start with the OpenAI version. Uh, we're going to also start with the info in the beginning of this schema. 
Um, so the OpenAI version, this uh, specifies the version of the OpenAI specification used to write this schema. So for example, it's like saying which set of rules or standards we're following. And in this case, version 3.10 of the OpenAI. Uh, the information section uh, acts as kind of the metadata for the API. So it provides the title, and in this case, it's good cryptocurrency price data, a brief description of the API's purpose, retrieving current prices of cryptocurrencies from Coinbase, and then the version of the API documentation that we're using. And in our case, it's Coinbase's version 1.0. Okay, the next is the servers. Um, servers section lists the base URL for the API endpoints. Uh, and in this schema, the API's base URL is api.exchange.coinbase.com, which is where all of the API requests are directed. And again, that's based on the documentation from Coinbase. So if you're using any other kind of API, you will kind of follow the guidelines of that particular documentation. Oh, by the way, don't pay attention to this um, error at this point right now because I'm kind of going through step by step. So that's saying that uh, could not parse the valid API spec because obviously this is API uh, schema is not complete yet. Okay, next is path. Um, so paths, this is where the available paths for endpoints of the APIs are defined. So each path represents a specific function or resource over the API, right? So in this particular scenario, we have the path products slash product ID slash ticker. So this is defined um, for getting the current prices information of a cryptocurrency. The product ID that you see is actually a placeholder that should be replaced with the actual ID of the cryptocurrency product like BTC USD or uh, ETH USD or whatever uh, cryptocurrency you're looking to retrieve that information for. And then right underneath it is the get method. Uh, so the get method, this defines the HTTP method used for this request. So get is used for retrieving data from the server. It's like a specific way of asking for information. And then the parameters, um, so the parameters are additional data that you send with your request to specify uh, what you want. And in this case, obviously, it's like the product ID. Uh, this parameter is part of the path and is actually required. So it specifies the ID of the cryptocurrency product you're inquiring about. And if you go to the uh, API documentation, it will actually give you all of the parameters that are required that you need to pass with your request in order to get uh, the proper information. So in our case, what we're doing is we're sending things like the name, description, um, the schema. And again, this is right here, require true. So this is the Boolean uh, that's based on, again, the API documentation that you'll see. Okay, so next is the responses section. So this section describes the possible responses you can get from the API. So a 200, this is a successful response, which it will tell you the latest trade price, uh, the size, the time, so all of that is described in the response section here. So if you get a 400 error message, that indicates that it was a bad request. Uh, so you probably are either missing something in the parameter or the request is incorrect. A 404 message also means that the request product was not found, meaning that whatever you're asking for doesn't exist. And then the last thing is the components. So components are used to define reusable structures like schemas, parameters, security schemas, and etc. right? So in this schema, it's an empty object and implying that there are, are no reusable components defined. All right, so that's it. Now our schema is complete. So just kind of overall, so this schema essentially just provides a structured way to interact with the Coinbase API. So specifically to retrieve current price information for various cryptocurrencies, right? So it details how to formulate the request and what to expect in response um, because we want to ensure that consistent and predictable interactions with the API are achieved. All right, so now that this is complete, let's go back. So we'll come here. Um, oh, one more thing I actually wanted to point out. Um, so here the authentication. Um, so this is where if you need an API key authentication, which in majority cases you will do, you will come here and add it. One thing to note, because I've tried a few APIs, sometimes this doesn't work here. So the kind of the workaround is to actually put your API key in the instruction section. All right, so let's go to the instruction section and actually provide a few instructions here. Okay, so the first instruction I'm providing is the role and the goal. So I said the crypto advisor is designed to provide up-to-date price information on various cryptocurrencies. Uh, so it assesses users by fetching current market prices, offering comparisons between different cryptocurrencies and providing brief insights into the market trends. Um, so what this does is along with the API information that's being retrieved, um, we can also 
put the goal here that it will provide additional pieces of information if it's being asked. Okay, so the constraints. So I want to make sure we put a constraint here because the point of the GPT is not to provide investment advice or predictions about price of the future. So that's exactly what I'm putting here. The main goal of this GPT is to provide relevant and up to date um, price information regarding um, cryptocurrencies. And again, that information is coming in directly from Coinbase's APIs. Okay, another guideline is um, we want to make sure that when there's a specific cryptocurrency being asked, the GPT will provide the latest price information along with the overview. And again, this information is also coming in based on uh, Coinbase's APIs as well, but it will also provide additional pieces of information if asked by the user. And then also a quick clarification uh, guide here that we're putting in. So if a request is unclear of the, or the cryptocurrency is not specified, then the GPT will ask for clarification. Because again, if the user is not providing what information or what cryptocurrency they're looking for as far as the price details, then obviously we won't be able to retrieve that information from Coinbase. So this just uh, indicates that make sure the GPT knows exactly what the name of the cryptocurrency that the user is looking for. All right, that's it. Just very brief set of instructions. We're going to close this. So now let's test this out. Okay, so these suggested uh, conversation stars is actually fine. But what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to specify to call the API exchange and provide the latest information regarding Ethereum. Okay, so I said call the API exchange Coinbase um, to provide the latest details regarding Ethereum. So let's see what it does. Okay, so as you can see, now it's calling the HTTP endpoint. And again, all of this is based on the schema that we provided, of course. Um, so now it's asking, would you want to talk to the API exchange? And I'm gonna say allow. All right, so it looks like it made several requests and then also the response was received without any error. And here's the information exactly per the response request that we sent here, right? So the price, uh, the time, the bid, the size, all of that is being provided here. Okay, so now instead of asking it directly to reach out to Coinbase's API, I'm just gonna say, provide the latest BTC price information. So this should be smart enough to now directly retrieve this information and talk to Coinbase's API. So I'm gonna press enter. So this is starting action, there you go. So now it's calling the HTTP endpoint request. Um, I'm gonna allow, by the way, I'm gonna actually click on always allow for this so that way it doesn't ask me this every time I'm asking my price. So I'm gonna click on always allow. And again, it's gonna go ahead and call the endpoints and then provide us the information that uh, is being sent from Coinbase. And as you can see, kind of similar information based on, again, the API schema that we uh, put here together. All right, that looks great. So I'm going to click on save, publish only me. And that's it. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. Until next time.